Welcome everybody to part two of this Westinghouse radio redo. Uh, this video is going to be a little longer, but I'm not going to do a third part, so we're going to finish today. Away we go. So the initial power up didn't go quite so swell so we're gonna try again here we've opened everything up um, I found one little I'll show you a better picture of it but there's one little um, wire in here that goes to an unused spot um, on a tube uh, socket and several things are tied there and then they go to ground so this thing was grounded um, but I can't I cannot find where that wire might have gone I don't think it was uh, hooked up over here because this is meant to be according to the um, the information that I have that was meant to be swung open uh, so so that the uh, uh, radio could be serviced so I went to the top of the chassis I took the electrolytic out um, this is not what's in the schematic the schematic shows five microfarads um, it doesn't give a voltage these are two eights so what I did was I got this little guy right here that's an eight plus eight so there's two eight microfarads at uh, 450 volts in there and as you can tell I really got this alligator clipped in so uh, these two are hooked up to the they were two separate ground wires and uh, these guys are hooked up to uh, the respective uh, places where they were before um, hooked up to on this guy and you see i tried to get this stuff out and it was going to be a real pain in the you know what to make it happen uh, but this is small enough it'll fit under the chassis just fine i'll put this somewhere along the way i'll remount this thing uh, just for looks sake and uh, we'll leave it on there but it's not going to do anything um, also we we had to take this loose from the chassis uh, I wanted to put some it was a little grungy a little rough and we when we took it out we managed to um, uh, find a little spot where we could squirt some deoxid in there and so we worked that um, that is incredibly smooth now before it was not so great and I don't know if you could hear it in the other one, but when you got down to this end for the tuning coil, it made some awful noise scraping. And I assumed that some of the blades down here um, on the tuning capacitor were touching at that point. It made that kind of grind. Um, but what I did was um, I went ahead. So it was very slow to sort of warm up, and uh, that station, if uh, it's where, what I think it is, um, the, the, the radio certainly no more is making those hummings and screeching sounds I was hearing before, but it's um, not... Um, um, that's a local station which should be booming in, and it's okay. 
But it's not very loud. Of course, I do have uh, this over here to protect the speaker because it's torn already. Okay. Well, that little sucker right there, it's going to work. Looks a little Rube Goldberg at the moment, but we're going to clean all that up. And now it's time to get underneath there, I think, and start replacing uh, uh, some capacitors. So that's next. One more thing to add. The radio's on, so I'm not going to stick my fingers in there, but you can tell there's been a little something coming out of the bottom of that transformer. The wires have a little, they're a little sticky. Um, that transformer now is running just mildly warm. It's warm, but it's not bad, so um, hopefully whatever problem was uh, causing it to be unhappy, we've, we've solved that. Now comes the time of sort of great pain and pleasure, which is the recapping process. Uh, I have some radios that seem to work uh, fine, and you know, you're tempted to just let the capacitors fail. Maybe they'll last another 50 years, but uh, in this radio... Uh, <laughs> Not so. It's that it's got to. They've got to be replaced. So I'm going to clip out. I have two, one on top of each other. So I'm going to do two at a time. I'm going to clip this top one out, then I can get to the bottom one. Um, the, I, I know what these are from the schematic, but if, if you take a look at that, there's like <laughs> there's no uh, discerning mark on there at all. There's no no lettering, no values, nothing. So, but I know what it's supposed to be, and I have the caps for it ready to go. So, um, with that other cap out, I can get to this one that's down below. It's kind of the one that was most buried, but I can reach the leads now. Again, I'm clipping, I'm, I'm clipping the capacitor out with um, uh, cutting as close to the capacitor as I can. So I'm leaving the the uh, the, the leads uh, in place, uh, soldered to where they uh, where they are now. Um, and we're going to come back in. I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to do the coil method again. I'll show you what, what that looks like. We did it once before. So now here's this tired little bad boy. Again, doesn't look so pretty and not a mark on it. <laughs> no writing or anything, but we know what it's supposed to be. So we're going to use the coil method again. Um, I'm going to take uh, my cap uh, capacitor replacement there. I'm going to, I don't know whether the wire should go around the little screwdriver or the capacitor should go around but anyway you make a little coil and uh, a little pigtail and that's going to slip over the lead that I left behind when I cut the uh, the other old capacitors out um, I always like to sort of angle those too because the wires in the chassis there are coming from different directions you know up and down and left and right so I always try and angle them so when I get down in there, they'll slip over the uh, uh, the wire uh, a little easier, um, and then we're going to solder them in. So like I said, I'm not going to show you every single capacitor change. So I did those first two, um, and here's one that uh, goes on a relatively straight wire. I'm just going to show you. I you know I slip it over. I, sl I slip the little coil over one end. And then you uh, then you drop the capacitor, <laughs> then you slip the other end uh, over the other lead, and um, it sits in there nicely in in position. And then all you do is solder it. You solder it in place. Uh, get the soldering uh, gun. Uh, put the tip on right where the coil is, and uh, um, put a little solder there. Good to go. Um, I'm going to apologize here because. I'm going to totally block soldering this, but I, I, you know what it looks like. And again, I'm not going to show you anymore. This is what I'm going to do for um, all the rest of the uh, in the caps uh, in the radio. So the power cord's not in fantastic condition. We're going to go ahead and replace it. It's got a cool plug on it. I think it's plastic, but it's kind of decorative. 
but it's pretty uh, it's pretty dirty so we're gonna just clean it up a little bit um, that's where the power cord goes into the chassis there's a piece of wire or not wire but tape there uh, you know we're gonna get rid of that um, I'm gonna use this extension cord and cut off both ends uh, this is what my wife uses to plug the Christmas tree into the nearest outlet so uh, that's gonna be fun at Christmas time but we got to do it and there's the uh, uh, the, the on off switch and on the left side there we're just going to unsolder those two uh, power connections and, and solder the new one in. The plug got uh, like I said gojo treatment and got a little lacquer and looks like that now so uh, you know it looks pretty good we're happy with that. So um, I wanted to get a tensioner for, for the back back here, but I couldn't find one locally. I wasn't going to wait for one online. So I bought this little packet of grommets, and there's one in there that I'm pretty sure is the, the right size. And to slip it in there, I'm going to use slick nuts. So if you have a guitar or know the parts of a guitar, you'll know what a, a nut is. But I used that on the back side to slip that grommet in. It worked great. And that's the inside of the chassis with the grommet in and... Uh, uh, a little knot there to keep the plug from coming out. Um, also took the time to get the electrolytic mounted inside underneath the chassis, soldered it in, um, shrink wrap so it's it's in its position there. It looks looks fine. And here's the uh, the the antenna and the ground wires. Uh, they are in awful awful condition. So I'm going to replace those as well. Okay, with everything reassembled, we're going to tackle the speaker. Um, I may have showed this early on, but there's a little tiny tear right there, and the little that little piece is actually missing. It's not back around behind there. It's actually gone. And there's another little tear right there, and it's starting to develop a tear between this spot and over here. So... Um, we did something similar before for a speaker that I ruined because I didn't cover it and I put my fingers all through it but you know you take a, a filter from a coffee machine and I just cut out a little piece right there and I'm going to use that to put over here to, uh, uh, to, to fix that little spot where there's a tear and we're going to use, um, last time I used this, I actually, somebody said, oh, don't use it at thickness as it comes out of this, you know, thin it out a little bit. Well, this is incredibly thin paper. And what I found was that it was a lot easier to work with if I used it just as it came out of the tube. So that's, uh, or the container. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, looks like Roscoe got a hold of my uh, little plastic cup. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so let's put a little in there. Actually, there's some water in there already, which I don't want. Let me get that out. I rinsed that out because Roscoe apparently got it down and gave it the business, and it got a bunch of stuff in the bottom. Okay, not much. We can get a little more if we need it. So, I'm going to put this on. Pretty exciting, isn't it? And I'm going to lay this across. Kind of can't push too hard because it's a got a little crack on the side there. Well, let's put a little over the top. I can. This seems thicker than it was before. Maybe it's thickened up in the container a little bit. We'll make it we'll make it go here. Ah. 
you get some on the patch and some on the cone right next to it there we go and then there was another little break right there we're just going to paint over it this tacky glue will never harden completely so it's not going to get rigid okay I saw that move there so let's put a little okay and I think while I'm going here I'm just going to go ahead and go around this outer edge. So we'll let that dry and we're going to power up the radio here in just a minute or two and give that a little test and uh, see if it worked. The next little uh, chore is going to be to um, sort of, I'm going to repaint it but I, I might have just been able just to clean it but I've got some paint I think that's a pretty close match so I'm just going to give it the once over with a little paint. Um, it's This is dulled during the year so um, we'll just do a little freshener on it so behind it I've got this is my coffee filter and I've got it propped up with a screwdriver there so and I was doing some other touch-up stuff around the house uh, so I got a little sample paint here of a color that's not that far off so I'm going to just put It's going to be really hard to see on a camera, but um, just touch this up. That actually looks much better. You'll never be able to see that, probably. And uh, I'll go ahead and tilt this back. Well, you know what? I was going to paint in here too, but I'm going to ixnay that. So that's pretty quick. Um, let me just get some of the... Get a little paint on the back side of the pointer and get off some of the excess. Perfect. We'll let it dry just like that. Should look A-OK. -okay. It's time to work on the cabinet, so let's take out the uh, speaker grill. I'm just going to use... Uh, uh, regular staple pullers to get that out of there and there's a couple of screws that hold on a bracket that keeps the dial glass in um, so uh, pulled those uh, staples out this just slips right out um, and yeah, backside's kind of pretty so this is still not bad I'm gonna reuse it it's not perfect but it's it looks great in the radio and uh, uh, saves me a lot of time and hassle so took those brackets off and so the, the, the dial plate, dial glass, um, it's just dirty and so um, we're going to clean it up a little bit um, but it's not, you know, for its age it's not too bad, I hope I don't drop it and so there's a police band there which my radio does not have. Time to do something about the cabinet, it's not in great shape um, and we're not going to try to, you can see the top there is pretty nasty and 
uh, lots of scrapes. Um, we're not going to try to make it brand new, but we are going to try to clean it up a little bit. And there's dents in the wood and things like that. Um, you know, we're just, we're going to leave those, but we're going to try and make it look respectable. So, um, I have donned my pink uh, rubber glove for this uh, special occasion. And so, um, we're going to go through and work it over and see, uh, you know, if we can make it, uh, uh, make it look halfway decent. So, uh, I'm going to speed it up a little and play a little music while, um, uh, we work on the outside of this thing. Okay, so uh, we got the um, surface looking pretty uniform, um, and I think that's where we're going to stop. It's, again, not trying for perfection, but it looks pretty good. I don't think we're going to have to stain or do anything like that, but we'll see. Um, and that's it for this process. And since I got my big glove on, it's off to clean the toilets. Okay, so the uh, lacquer thinner uh, kind of did a little number on the darker parts um, of the radio, the things that were either uh, dyed or stained darker. Um, so all I did here was uh, just tape this off and I'm going to go around with some um, black paint and just spray these darker areas to sort of uh, get it solid colored and filled back in. Um, there's also a, 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 a little trim piece along the bottom and I actually painted that black just as an experiment to see what I liked better. I don't think I liked it as well so I think this is actually going to turn out better for me. So I'm going to do this all the way around and then I'm going to go around two or three times com you know, completely again uh, just to get a nice clean coat. And the little speaker slats I took out, and this is them. I sprayed them with some black also. We're going to need some new decals. I reached out to the marketplace, Radio Days. Uh, now they did not have reproductions for my model of radio, but what I did was search through the ones that they did have. Um, I needed the Westinghouse logo, obviously, and it needed to look a certain way to match what I had. Um, I also needed um, a sticker or a decal that said uh, power volume, um, and then the other one was tuning. So, you know, I just had to go through what they offered online there until I found uh, one that matched uh, what would work for my radio and I ordered it and um, um, that sheet's gonna work fine I have some leftovers I can maybe use for something else and uh, we're gonna put those on right now um, I'm reading the instructions I think uh, first uh, I'm, I'm I used to do these when I was a kid I, I put together um, uh, airplane uh, you, you know um, what am I trying to say model airplanes 
uh, I liked World War II type airplanes and I put them together and they all had decals and I was lousy at it so I got better about the time I, I grew out of that <laughs> I got better at it but uh, um, they never really looked very good but here we're gonna have to sort of follow the instructions because this has got to look right so I put you soak those for I, I forget you can if I get these numbers wrong you can tell me in the comments but I think you soak it for like four or five seconds in the water and then 30 seconds out of the water and uh, I put a little water down on the radio first as you notice there and then put the decal down put your finger on the decal slide the the bottom part out and the decal stays down so there's a, like a little film of water you can move it around a little bit uh, and place it right where you want to so uh, that's what I did and um, this turned out to be not so not so bad it turned out to be okay so I'm gonna cut out the uh, I don't know which one I'm gonna do next looks like the uh, tuning so again I put some more water down on the radio just a few drops and um, after the decal is soaked you're not going to be able to see it but I'll put my finger on the decal slide out the the bit underneath and um, I think I'm trying to line up the Westinghouse um, um, I, I think that was right in the center so I, I'm just going to center that shouldn't be a problem So I cut out the part where it was soaking and now we'll put that on in the center this one was a little longer and it also uh, you needed to line it up there's a row of buttons right above it and then there's a sharp edge at the bottom of the uh, the front of the radio right below it so um, it was a little more critical than getting the other two lined up this one really has to sort of match top and bottom um, and in an attempt to move it around a little bit it was a little squirrely on me but um, um, I think we managed I'll show you a picture here at the end I think it turned out pretty good when you get through doing this you'll notice that the sticker sort of stands out you can see the clear back of the decal or the clear clear part of the decal it's sort of you can see the edges um, that will of course go away once we uh, once we do a little uh, uh, more cabinet work and uh, so it's hard to see there I'll show you a couple of pictures there's the power volume and then uh, Westinghouse and tuning so there you go So our last thing to do to the cabinet is we're going to apply some lacquer, some um, satin lacquer, and we're just going to I'm going to I'm going to apply this till I'm convinced it's got a nice decent coat all the way around. A couple sprays on the inside even to seal it up a little, um, and then I'm not going to show you, but once I get through, I'm going to do some light steel walling just to smooth the surface off. Uh, but hopefully this is all we're going to need to give us a nice finish. So here's the um, slat speaker slats, and we need to reinstall those. So we're going to—they're held in by screws. So we're going to screw that back in. Next, the um, cabinet. We're going to put, put. We didn't do anything with this um, speaker cloth, so we're just going to. Um, put it back in where it came from I didn't want it in there while we were doing cabinet work so I've had this little stapler thing in the plastic forever now been wanting to find a, <laughs> a reason to use it so uh, this is the perfect thing so we got that out took the plastic off and now we're just going to staple it back in I'm going to uh, staple right back over the 
same spots where the old staples came out. And um, so, you know, for old grill cloth that nobody's touched in God knows how long, it's it looks uh, it looks pretty good. All right. And we took the uh, the glass out for the dial, but we need to clean it off. So um, I, I may have mentioned before, one side's pretty dirty and one side isn't. Fortunately, the side that's really the dirtiest is the side that faces out, which is not the side that the um, uh, the labeling is printed on. In other words, the printing for for the dial is on the back. So um, we'll we don't feel really like we have to be particularly careful with that front side. We'll um, clean it up pretty good. And then for the back side, uh, you know, just maybe a a damp cloth. It's not that dirty, but we'll keep working on it until we uh, uh, think we get it cleaned up where it looks nice and clean. That's it right there. It's pretty clean. Sits on two pieces of felt. Those felt pieces were in good shape. Um, um, there was no reason to take them out and replace them. So I left them in there. There's these brackets that have two screws at the top and a little uh, fold over at the end that sort of holds on to the the bottom of the dial um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those little brackets down in place loose and then I'm gonna kind of start the screws a little bit by hand and then we'll come back and tighten those up it should be uh, Shouldn't be any problem there. That should be uh, held in place. I, I didn't manhandle those screws too much, just nice and firm. And there we go. So, front looks pretty. The last thing we need to do is put new feet on this radio. The old feet had completely hardened up, uh, not doing their job. So, we're going to replace those uh, old feet with new feet. And um, I don't think the cabinet is overly fragile, but I'm not sure, so I'm going to be kind of careful here trying to uh, hammer these things in to make sure I don't do any damage or cause anything to bust apart. Um, when I get through, that nail or that tack really needs to go farther down. It needs to be countersunk on down in there to uh, be fully secure against the cabinet. So as soon as I get these in there, I'm going to go around with an old beat-up screwdriver use that to kind of drive that center tack down and uh, these things shot to last for this radio for a long time well have we finally reached the end I think so so it's time to put this back together and turn it on and we'll see what happens um, you notice that sticker on the bottom I reached out to several people online that made reproduction labels decals that sort of things uh, nobody ever got back to me I thought about trying to do it myself but I didn't have anywhere near high enough resolution uh, I could get some photographs but they just weren't they weren't going to be sufficient so for now that old label is going to stay just like it is so we'll uh, put the uh, chassis screws I brought chassis screws too trying to get four new ones they did not work so the old the two old ones are going to go back in um, we also bought some felt washers uh, for the knobs so there is felt in between the knob and the uh, and the cabinet hopefully that'll stop a little wear along the way it's a bit slow to warm up but no problem Not an audience, but from followers. She was making macaroni and cheese with almond milk. Kind of...
You sure to do this? No, you don't. But you might not pay off 222,003 years and nine months either. So, absolutely impressive numbers. Nuestra lotería, todas nuestras tiendas de supermercados las Américas. Los esperamos. And I know of your dynamic ability to change. Are you tired of chasing your rainbow dreams and being one of the 90% of American businesses that fail every single year? Are you tired of feeling stuck and being one of the 70% of Americans that hates their job? These guys with a lot of cool, and they've got their MBAs, and they're brilliant. They're getting paid a ton of money by these teams to be able to come up with creative ways to move this stuff around to make it all work. As a player, I... Aprovecha de estos especiales solo el miércoles de locura. Y recuerde que en supermercados Las Américas... Estos especiales solo son válidos el miércoles 4 de septiembre. Please enter your plate number and watch how your car's details pop up. watching everybody. I sure do appreciate it.